Hola, senor. Today we're gonna be working on my brakes on my car. It's uh, not working, eh? Step one, I'm going to loosen the lug nuts. How much travel does this thing have? This thing was like down here looking like a strawberry picker owned it. Ah, we're gonna stick a block of wood on it. Go on, uh, take two. old cars man so finally got the focus focus finally got the wheel off you can see I have to lift it I have the diff setting on that jack stand and you can see with this fender skirt being half a skirt that tire didn't want to come out so this first look at it looks like it's got a a nice somewhat it's homemade exhaust it looks like it's just running these cherry bombs or resonators sounds okay it actually sounds pretty quiet so i'm okay with that big old ford there you go thank you camera ford nine inch you can tell because it's a third member here it's a full-on ford i don't know how good that u joint is we'll just forget about that for the time being um these shocks look pretty G. People let me know what they're about right now. They are, I'm pretty sure that's gonna say Motorcraft, that OE Ford stuff. But uh, sure track, heavy duty, kind of cool. Reason why I'm in here is because the Z brake ain't holding, plus the rest of the brakes ain't holding, but I'm gonna go over to the master when I get there. The thing is I want at least a, a cable brake for the time being, that E-brake, so I can still move it around or get it where I need to without panicking opening the door and Fred Flintstoning it so right now the e-brakes in the car it's in the car thank god we know it's a non pause because the other wheel isn't spinning so uh, <laughs> normally they're not that easy so what are we looking for let me show you usually with a oh, you can see all this dirtiness and it. it's a little heat torn good enough for me is what I'm saying usually they'll have a rust slip right here but most likely these have been machined in the past with the riveted on brake shoes which are nice i'm just going to scuff these up brake clean them when you see evidence of paint peeling like that that's usually because brake fluid will do that so i have a suspicion my wheel cylinder is going to be bad the way we're going to determine this is we're going to take a look underneath these boots usually grab a pick and pull back and we're going to look for any type of moisture so i'm going to go zoo i'm going to go grab some tools and we'll take a look here in a minute Okay, so that's a wheel cylinder. Uh, what you can do if you're even broke, just pop a hole in it. <laughs> and these are, surprisingly, this one's dry as a bone. This one, wrong ass tool to be using. That's dry too. Hmm. So maybe somebody's changed these. Well, I'm just gonna do a good old backyard brake job.
There you go. Charge your customer a 0.5 laver. Get it out the door. So what the e-brake wasn't working as well. You can see the cable back here. Gonna go back here, ignore me. This is a lever. Um, you wanna work? You wanna pull it? So you can see it pulling in. Let go. Now just dump it like you're really tightening it. Let go. Do it again. Again. Oh. Yeah. Keep doing it. Let go. So you can see that it's, it, it is engaging. The reason, I guess, it was set too loose. Because you saw how easy that drum came off and on. So the e-brake cable, at least on this side, is working. So we'll uh, tighten up the star wheel. That's a star wheel. We could do that from the back as well. I'll show you how to do that both ways. And then we'll uh, get the drum nice and tight here and we'll verify that the e-brake holds. Alright, brakes are all scuffed up, so join me down here. This guy right here is a star wheel and that's what's going to spread the shoes farther. So. It's gonna be the same on both ways because these things are threaded backwards on one way. So don't go righty tighty, lefty loosey. That's gonna be backwards. So I think down is tight. I could be wrong. Sometimes you could lift this guy up. It just holds it down. It's for the auto adjuster, but I'm just gonna cheap shit this. And what I like to do is once I get it wherever tight, we're gonna slip the drum on, but I like to at least get the distance from here to here that way we could eat make it even on both sides so we could count the threads go one two three four five six seven eight ish threads we could check the other side then that way we could make sure that they're the same that way when you break you don't get no pulling issue or whatever have it all right ignore my steel toe boots here we're gonna try test fitting her on you know what let me drop the e-brake i don't know if the e-brake's on or not right now um, so it's a little bit loose still, so we're going to have to just repeat this process until we find the sweet spot. Yeah, you can see it's getting tighter to get on. Now you get to this point where you're like, do I risk it? Do I tighten it down? Because <laughs> then it's never going to come back out. If I was smart, I should unback that out. But I'm not the smartest. You know what? I'm going to back it out. That's what you want, just a little bit of friction. It's good to spin the drum a couple of times actually, because what I'll see sometimes with drums, instead of being perfectly round, they're more egg shaped, like ovaled out. And that's where the problem occurs. That's where you'll get it feel like it's free and then it'll get super tight, but that'll be good enough, I'm pretty sure. So what I'll do now, because my main concern is the e-brake, let me grab a lever or something. It's my good old e-brake test. We're gonna grab a lever. Not the best thing to do, to be honest. So we can spin it. We'll apply the e-brake. Let's see if she holds. And it doesn't hold. That ah, kind of does, actually. Where the fuck did it move and then stop? Hmm. Nope. Not happy with that at all. Nope. Yeah, it turns out I'm an idiot. I didn't press down that lever quite as much. That. Yeah, that's solid. That ain't going anywhere. I'm just a dumbass in this. This lever goes. Has a lot of play. I was just pressing it down here, but. 
I guess she needs to go all the way down here. Then the e-brake holds, so I'm happy. One side down, I'm gonna do the other side off camera. All right, guys, uh, I forgot to close out this video here, but a uh, super quick video, just gonna throw the rears together. That was just so the car could stop, because the car is not actually stopping right now, so that's what the brakes put, the rear brakes uh, put together. Uh, just throwing the e-brakes there so I could at least drive the car on my backyard. Get a feel for it. Uh, as of right now, I recorded about like three or four more episodes of this one, so I'm just gonna throw this one up real quick and then I'll upload every Monday here. What's next in store? I still got the uh, good DIY way to make the bumper chrome look better. Very cheap, very on a budget. Um, another video, I still gotta get the fronts working, so I'll show you how to get that going, what's involved, and again, everything's on a budget here. No, no money spent here. This is really just rations <laughs> pretty much at this point. And also we do a little bit of body work getting into that. We're going to be filling some um, holes. I'll show you how to do that again. Super budget, no real tools needed besides a welder and grinder. Um, if you guys like this build, let me know. Uh, follow, subscribe to this channel if you like it. If not, leave a like. Let me know if you like this build. We're going to get more back into everything here. Uh, my Honda is still giving me trouble, so we might touch back on that. Get a little bit of a break. Touch on the Honda, then get back to the Mercury. But... Um, yeah, that's uh, episode so far. Hope you guys like it. I got some editing to do. Bye.